What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm and this is the next video in the series that we have been doing on installing this water line for our farm upgrades and just as soon as I got done digging last night a storm came and we got an inch of rain so it pretty much filled up the ditch and what I was telling you guys about it pretty much washed a lot of the dirt away so now you can see more rock and luckily it is hot and sunny today so a lot of the water's dried up I still got to get in here and clean some of this up and all that but you can definitely tell how many rocks are in here now since the uh, rain kind of washed the dirt away so what I'm gonna do is uh, I had planned on not installing the water line until tomorrow I just got off work so I got a few hours this evening to work on it um, I was gonna plan on using all day tomorrow because like I said I'll probably have to go get some parts and this and that and that way things will be open but I am going to go ahead and get a jump on it today this evening because this tropical storm that's about to hit Texas um, it I guess this little storm that popped up last night is because of that I guess I don't know it just pretty much set right over us and before this thing gets any more uh, destroyed or filled up with water anymore I want to go ahead and get this thing started and just to kind of have a little head start on it and I kind of told you guys something and I'm gonna go against my own words I told you guys I was not gonna put the electric and the water in the same ditch and uh, after doing some research and stuff I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that it's gonna save me a lot of money doing it this way and uh, the way electrical wire works is uh, you have what you call amperage and stuff like that I'm not gonna get all technical into it but the farther you go the lower that drops so you want the shortest distance possible and this is just gonna be the best way to do it so I think I'm going to go ahead as soon as I get this water line done I'm gonna cover it up just a little bit and then I'm gonna lay the electrical conduit on top I don't know that for sure yet but that's what I'm thinking now but today my focus is getting this water hooked up and getting the fittings and all the water pipe laid and stretched out it's it's gonna be a chore it's super hot it's like 95 degrees the sun's blaring down um, I don't know any minute a uh, storm could pop up but uh, I'm gonna go turn the main water off to this hydrant this line right here and then uh, we're gonna get started I'm gonna get some of the, my materials laid out get some of the tools and uh, just start going I mean that's the only thing you can do I don't have any help right now so it's all I can do is just take one step at a time you know how projects are and uh you want something done right do it yourself right I hope I do it right now I've done this water line a few times and it's not that big a deal but every time you open one of these guys up there seems to always be some kind of a uh, pest in there like black widows and stuff like that so we don't want to get it all right so we got you can see that I don't know if you can see it or not it's kind of dark but I got a valve right there that's going to that water line so I'm gonna get that thing shut off and uh, we're gonna get in there and start taking things apart so I'm out here at the hydrant that I am coming off of to take the line down if you guys watched the first original video of the series I had all this cleaned out and you can see what the rain did so uh, I got my trusty shovel here I'm gonna get down here and start cleaning this out so I can get this uh, I gotta take this hydrant off to get all my fittings to go that way so that is what I'm fixing to do and uh, bear with me guys I don't know how much of this I'm gonna film or what I'm gonna video because once I get started I just want to get it done I'm gonna be a muddy mess here in a little bit like I said it rained an inch last night so everything's wet and muddy I don't want to ruin my equipment but I will try to film what I can and uh, hopefully we can get something done
Okay.
All right, guys, so you can see what I got put together now. I didn't talk over none of that. I was just trying to get it done. I got the PEX T in here, three quarter inch, three quarter inch, three quarter inch, and I come out here with the valve. This is all three quarter inch. Then I transition to the one inch poly pipe. And what you want to do is go ahead, when you're using this stuff, put all your fittings together because once you get your poly pipe, I'll show you guys. It actually slides in here like this and then you screw it down and this is a compression fitting so it's made when you screw it down it compresses and it doesn't leak and then you tighten down your uh, nut there so I'm gonna go grab the pipe and uh, start rolling it out Okay, so I got the coil all the way to the other end where we're going to make our cut. And uh, one thing I just found out are these little threads on these little brass compression fittings are pretty sharp. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and slide this pipe in and tighten it down. And then we'll pull a slack out that way. And um, we got a little slack right here to work with. What I'm going to do is pull it down here and I'll show you guys how these compression fittings work. All right, so you got your pipe. We already got one end of the compression fitting on there. And uh, you want to make sure this little gasket right here, the beveled end is going towards the inside or going towards the direction of the water in this case. And basically this thing is pretty easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back. Insert. And you want to push with pressure up against as far as you can push that way and some people use teflon tape some people don't i'm gonna go ahead and put some on here i'm gonna try not to get these threads dirty You want to try to keep this level and get your threads lined up. As expensive as these are, you do not want to cross thread them or have any kind of issues at all. Alright.
All right, so you want to get it as tight as you can, but there is a little set screw over here that you got to tighten up that clamps down on this pipe to keep it from pulling out. So you got to get it to where you can get a nut driver or a screwdriver too. All right guys, we should be good here. That is what the finished product looks like. Now we'll go down on the other side and uh, cut it to length and get that fitting on. All right, I got the T on. I got this end of the line hooked up and then I got our stub up for the hydrant. But I'm going to have to roll this coil out all the way down there to the end before I uh, t tie this on. I need to try to get it a little straighter. So that's what I'm fixing to do. Um, it's going good so far. I just set in about 12 inches of mud and pretty much got stuck so I had to go to the house up to the side of the house on the hydrant and uh, wash off real quick. But now I'm fixing to get back in the ditch and uh, stretch the rest of this line out. I think I got about 250 more feet to go. Okay, we made it to the end of the ditch. So I'm gonna go back up to the middle where the hydrant is and uh, go ahead and connect this end, get it tied in and tightened up. And then we'll come back and work on this end, the very end where the last hydrant's going. So here's what I'm deal dealing with here. This stuff is not any fun. You get your shoes in here and your feet and uh, you're pretty much stuck. So I gotta get this end tied on. I gotta get all this cleaned off and uh, get it all tightened up. Okay, so the T in the midpoint is done. Now it is ready to attach our hydrant. And uh, I'll go ahead and attach it when we do our test and all that, but then I'll have to get some kind of su a support. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed up here at the first one, but I had a big like one and half inch uh, piece of rebar that we drove in the ground. That's just a support for your hydrant because you know how it is. Sometimes your animals rub up against it and stuff like that. And I don't know if I have any of that left, so I'll probably just have to use a T post and that should work fine. And then you can just get some stainless steel pipe clamps and uh, put that around there and you should be good to go. So, uh, yeah, you want to be a farmer, huh? Do your own work and all that type of stuff. People always ask me why I wear Crocs. And this is why, because you cannot hardly destroy these things. And I can take them right off, go wash my feet off, and I'm ready to go. And that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go wash off real quick and then we'll uh, go up there, cut the line, and get all this straightened up. Hey guys, Rachel here with Hidden Heights Farm. I just got home from work and I caught Kevin uh, in a ditch, stuck in the mud, you might say. So I got one question, Kevin. Are those Crocs four wheel drive? <laughs> That's what I just talked about. I said, well, people always wonder why I wear Crocs. And I said, because they're pretty much impossible to tear up. You get them dirty like this, you can wear wash them off. <laughs> and I mean, you're dirty. Yeah, I showed them when I was in the ditch just a minute ago. Yeah, these are four-wheel drive for sure. I wouldn't be able to get out of there. <laughs> uh, I, need to, I need to be sponsored by Crocs. Uh, yeah. As much as I wear these things in the video, most people make fun of them, but I don't care. We don't care. They're a great farm shoe. All right, water feels good. All right, we're almost done. So I think, you know, you know that show Dirty Jobs or whatever that was? Yeah. They need to come visit our farm. Because you're always filthy and always working in the sun, doing hard work. It's part of it. That's a hard working man right there. <laughs> Mojo says, where's my dinner? Let's go get this finished. Before, it looks like it's fixing the storm. Look at this rain cloud. Like right above us. I would not, right here. I wouldn't be surprised if it don't start storming. It did last night. Tell them about Mojo. Knocking me down. 
Yeah, and Mojo decided he wanted to come in the house last night. It started storming, lightning and everything, thundering real loud. Rich opened the front door and he bolted in the living room. He just laid right down in front of the door for like 30 minutes until the uh, storm passed and he went right back out. Yep. We're not going to make that a habit though. <laughs> Mojo thinks different. There's another storm cloud. Okay. So we are at the end of our ditch. This is where one of our hydrants is going. And there is Java. What well, do you know, Java? You ready for some uh, fresh, clean water? Where you guys can take baths? Doing this for you, buddy. So now I'm gonna get down here and I'm gonna cut this to length where I want the hydrant to come up. Let's see. Dang, some roots poking out. Alright. And you can use a sawzall, but these things right here are quick and easy and they cut a good flush straight. Will you hand me that package? Let's see, how do I want to do this? Uh, I was trying to think if it would be easier to put the hydrant on first, but I don't think it will be. You pigs are nosy. No, that's not me breathing That's <laughs> not me breathing camera. hard either. <laughs> These guys over here checking it out. Yep. Yesterday when I was digging this, they came up to the fence because they could smell this fresh dirt. And they were going crazy. They smelled something in it, probably grub worms or something. And they were trying to get down there to get some something as a snack. All right guys, so I got the end on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, tighten it down all the way. And this just helps it from slipping on the pipe. Keep your pipe straight. <clears throat> and I got the uh, hydrant just hand tight. And I'm gonna try to turn it and try to get it straight the way we want it. That'll work. Oh. All right. So now we're gonna go put the second one on, or the one in the middle. Oh, that paint's got it real stiff. We'll go put the one on the middle, get that hydrant put on, and then we'll do a uh, leak test real quick. Or what are you doing? Hey. Are you showing off? I see you. Put your Crocs in four wheel drive. There's no good way about it. Ah. Is it cool? It's cold. Okay, well. But it's cold. got all these little freaking rocks in there getting my shoes. Ah. Oh well. Now what are you doing? Now, putting some more plumber's tape on this fitting. And this is gonna be the last connection we gotta make. And this is for the frost free hydrant right here at the barn. So watch out.
And uh, I told them earlier, I'm, I still gotta get a T-post or some kind of metal and drive right here. That'll kind of be a brace for this to help hold it up straight. Sorry, I'm trying not to get in your way. tighter and you got to turn it to where it's pointing the direction you want it. Is there something I can do? I um, just want to get down here. Just watch out so this don't hit you in the head. Let's see here. Would it help if I hold that hydrant? Yeah. So I'm trying to hold it up. This would stay on there. There we go. Is it supposed to turn? Yeah. Okay. Now we can turn our water on and uh, check for leaks. I mean, it's hot out here. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not even. All right. I don't know if you can see this. I'm not even. Get out of here. Uh oh. I'm not even doing the work, and I've got sweat pouring. I'm just sitting here filming. So I feel for Kevin. Ugh. He is working his tail off. I hear thunder, so let's go. We're gonna go back up here to the valve and turn the main valve on and check for leaks. All right, let's turn this back on. Okay. Let's see, man. Well, we'll go. We'll walk over here to the first valve and check all these fittings. Okay, so we got we got this valve turned off, so all this is still turned off, and we're isolated to here. I see no leaks anywhere. I'm gonna turn this on real quick. Get some of the air out. Okay, so we're good there. All right, so we turned our valve on. We got water in here now. I don't see any leaks right here. So let's walk down to the next one. Okay, <clears throat> we're at the hookup point number two in the middle. And I see no drips, no leaks. Let's test the hydrant. That's a lot of air in there. Uh, got good pressure here. I still got a lot of air in my arm. Alright. And you see that squirting out right there? That is normal, and we'll talk about that when we get to the next one. Skeeter, you can't go swimming in there. Alright. Alright. No leaks here. Nice and dry. Can you look down here? If there was a leak, you'd be uh, you'd see it by now. So we are good to go. I just need to support these with the T-post or something. 
So these come with these little caps on here. And if you do what I did right there, this thing should blow off. Watch this. <laughs> All right, watch out, here it comes. Still got a lot of air in the line. So we're gonna like we're gonna like get all the air out of the line here at the end and I'm not gonna fill these ditches in for a couple of days at least and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait let all this water drain and then I'm gonna come out here in a couple days and check it again for leaks before we start filling all this up uh -oh. what's going on <laughs> Oh, it's nice and cold. It feels good. So, you went quite a ways. How many feet is that? Uh, we went about 400 foot, the water mm -hmm. line. Oh. Here to come. I think they're excited. Here comes Java with his floppy ears. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to inspect it, don't they? Yep. Alright, so we're just going to set this here for tonight. Now, word to the wise. Alright, come talk about this real quick. Okay. So you see this leak right here? That is a bleed valve. And this is why this is a frost-free hydrant. Whenever you turn this handle off, there's a plunger in there and it stops it. Everything up in this hydrant drains out right there in the bottom. So what I'm going to do when I start filling this line is, that is why I got a whole truckload of gravel in the dump truck. I'm going to put all that gravel right here. You don't want any sand, silt, or dirt around that plunger valve down there because it'll get stuck up in there. And then your valve will get stuck open and this thing will just continually drain. It'll run your water bill up. So you want to use some kind of rock or gravel. I went with the 5 8 gravel. That way it's too big to go up in the plunger. And then if you ever have to dig it up again, you just got to dig up the gravel and not dirt and big rocks or nothing. So that's that. When you see that leaking like that, that's a good sign. That's not nothing bad. Now what I was fixing to mention was uh, when you put a water hydrant in with pigs, they will tear the far out of it yeah. if you do not have it. That's why we put it on, on this side of the fence. Supported with more than just a T-post because they like to rub their backs on things and uh, they will tear something up in a hurry. Pigs or cows, any kind of livestock, even yeah. goats, they'll rub on it. I've actually had the goats in our other Pygmy Kiko pen turn on a water hydrant before and we had a little heifer calf that we were bottle feeding and she came up to it and started nudging it with her nose and stuff. And she actually turned the handle on and it ran for almost 24 hours before we noticed it. Yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to go back and pick up all my tools and uh, we'll meet back up at the shop and we'll end this video. Bob was getting his back scratch. Started scratching his back. He just laid right down. Butterball wants her back scratch. So tell everybody the how old uh, Butterball is. Butterball is eight weeks old, and you can see she's catching up to the Berkshires that are, these guys were born back in January, February. And she was just born in end of May. Yeah. <laughs> so she's growing good. All right, I'm hot. All right, guys, so like 500 bucks, 400 feet later, we got two new hydrants here on the farm and that was one of our first phases of the farm upgrade. Uh, going into winter, it's what we were looking forward to getting done this summer. And uh, we don't have long before falls here. But anyways, we got the hydrant right here by the barn. We got the hydrant down there for the pigs, so we're set. Now we don't have to stretch out long hundred feet of hoses anymore. 
in the winter time when you do that you got to unhook them all the time you got to drain them you come out it's 20 degrees you got ice all in the middle of them so that was the whole purpose of that and this way we can ensure we always have fresh cold water for our pigs so that being said i'm going to end this video i'm going to go get in the shower clean up a bit and rest go get me some ice water or something and uh, hopefully you guys like this little series of the farm upgrade and we're going to have more coming we got some other projects we're going to do in the barn the next being the electric which i'll probably be doing here pretty quick um, i'm going to wait a couple days check the water hydrants for leaks and all the connections for leaks and then i'll start filling the ditches and all that so if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button leave a comment and we'll see you next time